Hi, me again. And today we're going to be looking at forms, and in particular the f kind of forms that we can use to gather information from a multitude of different users. Now the problems we have, generally speaking, are when we try and put these forms together in Excel, um, what you end up with is every single person has a separate copy of the Excel spreadsheet, and then how do you collate them all together? and you also get into problems when people don't open the thing you send them in Excel they open it up in some other program such as numbers and then of course all your macros don't work um, so it causes all sorts of problems now it's fine if you can get people to open a single Excel spreadsheet from a server um, but also you then have the problems of how do you have multiple people opening it at the same time and of course if anybody does think they know what they're doing they start to play with the settings behind the scene and generally speaking just mess things up. Uh, so we move on from there and we look at PDF forms. Now PDF forms are fine but they're rather bulky, they're not super customizable and again if you put a PDF form on a website uh, if you open it up in Internet Explorer, one of the older versions, it'll work perfectly well. If you try and open it up in Chrome or some other sort of uh, HTML5 browser then their own PDF uh, manager and it doesn't work as well, it won't actually operate as a form. Well, the, the form fields will still fill in but the submit button generally doesn't work. So this leaves us with actually having uh, web forms. Now just down here what I've got is an example of just a quick web contact form and this is the kind of thing that would get people to fill their data into and when they click the submit button um, we can tell the form to do one of a number of things. Now, one of the common things that people do is they'll click, they'll set the submit button to send them an email. And so they get the emails, they get a notification that someone sent a form. And in fact, on our website, that's exactly what we have here. So we have a quick contact form. When people click on the submit button, it sends an email. Uh, that's a good way of getting hold of me, by the way, if you, if you do decide you want to ask a question. Um, rather than that, um, and let me, let me just explain how that works first of all because what happens when you type in a mail to is it opens the default email application on your computer that you're sitting on when you're browsing that page on the internet. Now that causes problems if for example you're not sitting at your own PC with your own default um, email application like Outlook. And the other, there, there are lots of problems to do with it like for example if you don't have Outlook open it will open the new message window and then put it in your outbox but it won't actually send until you open Outlook and do your default um, send and receive on open um, so you can actually, there's a danger that you can be browsing the internet not having Outlook open you can get a form up which is a new message, think you sent it and it hasn't actually sent, it's just gone into your outbox and it'll sit there until you've next turned that particular machine on, not just any old machine, but if you shut that machine down and go away for two weeks, that message will not send until you open up Outlook on that machine again to do the send and receive. So that can cause problems. The other big issue is if people are on a somebody else's machine, the message will appear to have come from them. And also if you're in an internet cafe, perhaps there isn't a default email application on the machine so it just won't send at all, it will try and open Outlook or something like that but it won't be set up to send. So we get around that by rather than clicking submit to actually send a message from your browser what we tend to do is we tend to set up a little submit button there which sends a message from the server that this is hosted on again to a specific email address that also saves the email address from ever being published because no one knows what the email address is, the crawlers can't find it because actually it just runs to some PHP and that saves a lot of spam. Though. Not all of it, but quite a lot. Now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to try and compact that down and save a few steps because this button here, I've got it set up so that it will actually just quickly show you on the screen what fields you filled in and what information you put there but in the background what it will do is it won't send me an email it will add that data into a CSV file, an existing CSV file and the CSV file is this one here which has name, phone, 
email and message so they match the fields from here name telephone email and the message or query and as I say this is also saved on the on the server in the same location as the the form itself and as is the PHP that runs this so let's have a look in Dreamweaver so first of all we go to Dreamweaver this is the actual form itself so it's a very basic form just some form fields and you'll see down here these are the input fields hash email hash tell hash name and if I right click on them you'll actually see the ID of these fields now they're important and it's important you put in something that makes sense to you when you're doing this because you need to refer to them by their name in other words by the ID when you're talking about them in the PHP the submit button as well uh, you have your action which is submit the form that's it's got to be a submit rather than a reset and actually on the form itself if I select the form you see I've got the action which is put to CSV PHP yep. now that there will call the code put to CSV PHP when I click on the submit button so let's have a quick look at the code there so if I just go into the code um, this is the start of the PHP code and you do need to have this also saved in the same root location as the HTML file that refers to it um, simply because of the way that I've actually referred to it I haven't referred to a folder name so it needs to be in the same folder <coughs> now what this is doing is it's taking those four fields there and I'm assigning the values of those fields which are just slightly tidied up a bit so stripping the slashes off and trimming um, and I'm assigning them to variables so dollar message is the message itself just the text from the message no slashes or anything extras in there this line here echo is basically just putting together each of those variables that I've named up above here so the four variables name tell email and message each of them separated by a BR which is a line break and this is just pasting it into the web page so that form will disappear so this form here on the website will disappear and down the left hand side you'll just see those four fields that people have entered each of them separated by a line break what it then does is it looks at those fields and it says hang on if they're not empty any of those four then what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all four together into another variable here and the way I'm going to combine them together is variable one which is name and then a comma variable two then a comma variable three then a comma and variable four so I'm going to have the four items running across name telephone email message which matches name telephone email message each of them separated by a comma so that when I store it as a comma separated value it will uh, be in exactly the right format and the right order to go into my CSV file which already exists which is that one that we were looking at so there it is they've that's now stored in that variable there which is should be CSV I've called it CVS but it doesn't matter because I've referred to it down there as CVS as well um, I'm now setting yet another variable which is opening the file form data CSV yeah. now obviously uh, I say it doesn't matter if I say that CVS it does matter if I put in CVS there where it's an extension and I should have actually changed that I'll just go ahead and change it now so CSV data um, uh, like I say that's not actually important because it's just simply a variable and as long as I refer to it in the same way then it doesn't matter okay what I have down here now is I have this little variable here FP which says open the file yeah so that's the point of that so now I'm saying if it exists yep write to the file what's already there yeah which is the data that's already in the file and the new data which is on a new line and then close the file again now it's important to note that this file here is not this one here it's not the file that's stored on this computer it's actually the file that's stored here on the server so this is the server and it's that one not this one although they look the same 
it will be the one that's on the server that gets synchronized, not the one on my local machine. So what I would then need to do to actually check to see the data that's been put in is I need to click on there and I need to get the file from the server to make sure this one is the most up to date. Okay, let's go and have a look and see how this works. So at the moment, this file here has nothing in it. Um, I am going to close the file down because if I try and do any actions here with the file open, um, it won't let me. It'll it'll come up with an error because I can't put or get when I have the file itself open. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that form there, and I'm just going to type in some details. message and I'm going to click submit and down here on the left I have my four fields name telephone number email and message all of them separated by a line break between them now this is absolutely irrelevant you do not need to put it in it's just simply there as a test so that we can see that it is actually putting in the correct information what's really relevant is when we go here and I'm now going to click on this form data CSV and just to show that there's nothing in there now, if I have a look at this, I'll just open up this file. You can see this is a blank file. Close that down. And now I'm going to click on it and get the latest version of that from the remote server. And now I double click on it again and it opens up. And hey presto, there's all the information in from the last person who just entered information on that website. We could put all sorts of things here, we could put a notification, we could set it up so that it also sends me an email letting me know that there's new information on the website. Um, I wouldn't do that because what I'd actually do is I'd write a routine that will run um, the get operation uh, once a day or once a week and then collate this information, pop it onto another spreadsheet, uh, perhaps filter it out or something like that. Depending on the information that you're putting in, I mean, you could turn it into a pivot table, a pivot chart, to show the data in a certain way. Okay. Well, I think that's all I've got for you. I hope that's been useful. Uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>